uh, I am not resigning, and it is, uh, it is, in my view, an absurd notion that someone would bring a vacate motion, and we are simply here trying to do our jobs. Um, it is not helpful to the cause. It is not helpful to the country. It does not help the House Republicans advance our agenda, which is in the best interest of the American people here. And that was House Speaker Mike Johnson vowing uh, not to resign after Kentucky Congressman Thomas Massey uh, joined uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene in threatening to force a vote to oust the Speaker. Uh, over his foreign aid plan, Massey and the Georgia Congresswoman uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene both calling for Johnson to resign now. The text of the foreign aid package was supposed to be released yesterday. Sources tell Fox it's possible the House may not even have the bills ready this week. Joining me now is Montana Congressman Ryan Zinke, member of the House Appropriations and Science Committees. He's also a member of the Joint Commission on China. Congressman, thanks very much for being here. Okay. The drama continues in the House of Representatives today uh, with now Thomas Massey <coughs> joining uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene. Do you want Mike Johnson to step down? No, and let's be clear. Mike Johnson is the most conservative we've had in the history of this country. Secondly, he's a constitutional attorney. Third, he's a Christian. There's no doubt about that. And lastly, I think he's kind. In this environment where everything's hyperpartisan, people are angry about everything, I think running for, in a kind lane is not a bad thing. So, no, I think it's a distraction. Uh, he's not going anywhere. And, and, and look, Maria, I, you know, I've been a Navy SEAL, and I've been to a lot of battles in my life. And I can tell you, not every commanding general is George S. Patton. Because generals don't win wars, the front line wins wars, and the front line in this case is the members. And Mike Johnson will be successful as a speaker if the members rally around, as they should, and focus on getting the job done and not these distractions. So let's talk about the job getting done. Why has it been so difficult for Mike Johnson and you and all of your colleagues to secure the border? Well, I think the border is the number one issue. And the House passed H.R. 2, House Resolution 2, which secures the border. The Senate has yet to pick it up, and we're trying to find a way to force the Senate to pick up H.R. 2. You know, I, I mentioned with, with the Speaker this morning, I think we should start every day out from now to the end of this, of this session from well, a prayer, a pledge, and H.R. 2 to secure the border. That's what our constituents are telling us. That's what my gut says. The number one issue in this country is securing the border. This administration, by the way, has the full authority to do so in law. So he has the authority and he has the funding, but refuses to do so. Right. So the Biden administration refuses to, to shut the border down, even though he has the authority and the law. We're just trying to say, rather than shall, you will shut down the border. Yeah. So, so one, the way to shut down the border is to uh, st dig in and say you're not going to do anything until the border is closed? Well, the, the issue is this, Marie, is, is that there's other things happening in the world. We have Ukraine, uh, you know, th the thaw is coming. We have Israel on fire. We and, have and there's Venezuela. always going to be other things happening. I, I recognize Absolutely. that. There's always going to be other. But, but Lake and Riley is dead. People's homes have been taken over. People are getting robbed. We've got migrant crime. You say you want to close the border. Why can't you do it? Well, there is an extent of congressional power to do so. You know, why can't, we, why can't we make sure we can do appropriations, and why does this president forgive student loans when the Supreme Court says he's not? So you're right, and I, th I think it's a battle, and we're going to have to focus on, on the border and get something across the border to make sure the Senate picks it up. How I think you're right. We'll but, use but as much leverage as we can. how many times can you go through this exercise of doing more spending bills, agreeing to more, you know, money being spent elsewhere? with no security at the border. I mean, I, I recognize this drama within the House is ridiculous. And, and, and you know, it makes, it makes the House look like a joke that you can't unify at all. But uh, at, on the other hand, we're still waiting for the border security. Absolutely. You know, and the Republicans, there's a Montana saying that circle the wagons and shoot out rather than in. I think we all have to focus on the number one issue is, is the border. And I 100 percent agree with you. Is Mike Johnson focusing on the border? Uh, he is. Uh, his position is where we can, you know, walk and chew gum at the same time. I look at the border mean, as the number walk one and chew issue. Gum. You haven't walked. Well, There's no border security. <laughs> I don't well, understand you're, you're, what that you're means. You're absolutely right. So, you know, I'm not. I'm not sure we're going to lay the foot of, of the, our border security in the Congress, but. Uh, look, you know, look. the president has, again, he has the full authority and the funding to do it. So what is Congress going to do? Uh, we remove the funding uh, and re remove the, any, any border patrol at all? 
HR2 is our path to secure the border, yeah. and we're trying to find some way to get that get HR2 on the table for the Senate. Well, and whether it means to, holding everything up, instead, I, you know, we're getting close. Instead of having a fight within the membership, maybe you really need to be tougher with the Senate to get HR2 through. I, I mean, I don't know what to say at this point. I mean, we only needed 19 hijackers to take down the Trade Center. It feels a little like we're a bit of a sitting duck, given the fact you know, we, that we've got this wide open border and all of these people on the terrorist watch list and all of these Chinese nationals coming in, which we have no idea what they're doing. Well, and don't forget the fentanyl. So, you know, I, and, and Maria, I was just down at the border. We don't have a border. We have a processing unit. All those people have to do is say, I live in fear, and they're in the country somewhere. We don't know with a piece of paper that says show up, you know, in, in three or four years. You're exactly right. The border's the number one issue. So how do we, how do we put the border up, up front? I'd, I'd say in the morning, pledge, uh, let's do a prayer and do H.R. 2, and you're right. Force the Senate to take H.R. 2 up. I mean, How we do that uh, it, it is, a, is a tough call because obviously the Senate doesn't listen to us. The president loathes us. Right. And uh, in, in, in some ways, also, we got to get together as Republicans, circle yeah. the wagons, shoot out, don't shoot in. And, and therein lies the issue with Marjorie Taylor Greene and Thomas Massey. Now, the Select Committee on China, and you know all this, releasing a report accusing Beijing of manufacturing and exporting the materials used to make fentanyl and other synthetic drugs. The lawmakers say that the CCP gives tax rebates and grants to companies that make certain fentanyl and synthetic drug precursors used by the drug traffickers as long as they are sold outside of China. Congressman, what do you think about when you see this, the fact that the CCP is actually assisting and aiding and abetting the killing of American citizens with this poisonous fentanyl? Well, I sit in a bicamel uh, China commission. I can tell you they also harvest organs from political dissidents. Uh, this is the new China. And China, to be clear, is in the axis now with Russia, Iran, and China. That is the axis of evil. And they are no doubt sending fentanyl. We've known this for a while. Now the reports are true. Uh, you know, Barr has, has, has in an excellent article, you know, points that out and actions we can take. But yeah, China's not our friend. We, we should realize that. And we, we got to get off the China dime, meaning that, look, you know, a lot of our supply chain goes back to China. We have these, these companies that allege they're, they're environmental companies that produce in China. Oh, and if, you, if you're an environmentalist, Maria, you're going to love this. 90% of the world's plastic comes from four rivers in China. So look, look you know, on all sides, economically, militarily, and environmentally, uh, China is an adversary. Uh, for sure. And President Biden has yet to call them an adversary. He will not call it. He only calls communist China a competitor. So well, yes, it, 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 this is the same guy that doesn't shut down down the, down the border Correct. and has the authority and the money to do it. Yeah. Congressman, we'll be watching your work. Thanks very much. We know you have a lot uh, to deal with here with uh, an unwilling partner on the other side. Ryan Zinke, thank oh. you, sir.